In this lecture, we are going to understand throttling. Basically, we are going to build a function called throttle. This is very similar to the debounce function that we looked at in the last lecture. They both avoid the unnecessary action to be fired. So let's look at how it works. So imagine if you have a button and if I click on it multiple times in a quick succession, then the event associated with that button would get fired multiple times and you want to avoid that. So one way of doing it is using the bounce function that we looked at in last lecture. Again, throttle works a little different. So if you build a function called throttle and add some delay to it, let's say 10 seconds, then what really happens on the first click, the event would get fired. So this is the event uh, being fired. And within that delay, let's say 10 seconds, if the user clicks on it again, then those events won't get fired. But after that delay, again, if somebody clicks on it, then it would get fired. Then it would wait for another 10 seconds and it would prevent the other events being fired. So if you keep clicking on it continuously, then every 10 seconds you will get like one click. Compared to that, if you look at the debounce function, which work very differently. Debounce function, it doesn't really execute anything on a first click. It basically delays the event. And as soon as a user clicks on another a second time, it again delays uh, the, the event firing. So if you keep clicking on the same button over and over, nothing would get fired until the point where you actually stop and then there is a delay and then the last click would get fired. So essentially, in throttle, the first click gets fired. In debounce, the last click gets fired after the delay. Also here, if you keep clicking on the same button over and over, then there will be multiple events after each delay. Here, if I keep clicking on it, event will never fire until, until I stop. So a lot of times, debounce is very useful because it truly avoids a lot of unnecessary events. So they, these both functions have its own applications. So let's look at how to build a throttle function. Okay, so let's build a button first with some ID called my ID. And it says, click me. Right now, if I click on it, nothing happens. So let's add an event. So I would say document.get element by ID. And I would provide this ID. And let's add now it's supposed to be text. Let's add event listener. I'm just going to hide this and add event listener. And event listener would have click as the event and it would have a callback function that would get fired after you click on it. And this simply says console log you clicked me. Okay, so let's run this. And now if I click on it, it happens. And if I keep clicking on it, all these events are happening. So now I'm going to cancel. I'm going to clear it and build our throttle function. So the throttle function would work something like this. So it would say throttle equal to, it's a function which I can actually wrap this around here. And this would have two arguments. One is the function that I'm executing and a delay. So let's add five second delay, which means 5,000 milliseconds. Okay, so it would have two arguments, right? It would have a function and the delay. So let's add function and delay. And again, because this function runs right away and returns a handle that we provide to the click event. So it returns another function. Let's say that function can have a bunch of arguments. Let's say if I have an event here or something, that would be the arguments. Okay, so now what we want to do, what we want to do is uh, 
if this button was never clicked before, then we want to let the kick click through. So we need to understand, we need to get the time first. So we can actually calculate if it was clicked before, when was it clicked and all that stuff. Right? So let's get time, which is now equal to new date. Now this is how you can get time from the date. And we need to also track when was the last, when was this click last time. So I can have last equal to zero. Let's say let last equal to zero. And if now minus last is let's say less than delay, then I don't want to do anything. Basically, I am clicking within this time, this zone. In that case, I don't want any event to be fired. So all I'm going to do is return. That means it's not going to do anything. But let's say if that's not the case, then I want my last to be now, which means, which means I am here and let's fire the event. So firing an event is basically returning the function. You need to execute the function, this function, with the argument that you were supposed to execute it with. And that's all you need to do. Ah, there's a typo, this but function is not fun. So now if I run this and click on it, it executes. Um, let's say wait for five seconds. I'm just gonna clear it again and just keep clicking on it, okay? Five seconds passed. Okay, again, it happens after five seconds, it would click happen, but within five seconds, nothing would happen. So even though I have clicked maybe 15 times, there are only three, three events that were fired. So this is how uh, throttle really works. That's it, folks. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and provide a nice comment. Don't forget to write a comment. Uh, you can follow me on my Facebook and Twitter, and uh, you can follow the Facebook groups if you have any questions re regarding React or any other front-end related questions. Uh, you can purchase my Udemy courses. I have two courses currently on React and also JavaScript. And you can translate this video. The information is in the description. And thank you.